So we had been doing this thing where I would control the drone from the back of the motorcycle. Two up, we can kind of do that, right? Kind of. So far, I've been super successful at it. So, so far, <laughs> she's been successful. doing our awesome drone stuff and riding the bike at the same time. Yeah. I thought, oh, it'd be really great to get super low and then kind of come in at us while we're riding by. But super low, like down and back, not like forward and... Yeah. Yeah, we, she, <laughs> she got into some, some trees. All of a sudden, I see branches like all around the drone. She I'm like, like ah! Out. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Up and Overloaded. I'm Tim Notier and this is my beautiful wife. I'm Marissa Notier. We ride Two Up on a KTM 1190R and we've been through three different continents from North America to South America and Africa and now we are currently coming back from our trip to the very top of Alaska. And we're making our way through Canada. We have been going up and down the Icefields Parkway, yeah. which is an incredible road between Banff National Park and Jasper National Park. And it was so gorgeous. In the previous episode, we had the most fantastic day. It ended gloriously with this amazing elk. Oh, that was so cool. That was one of the coolest moments we've had. Like, and when we were in Alaska, we saw the muskox, and anytime oh, yeah. I get to bring up the muskox, I will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, uh, insert picture here, because it's amazing. But yes. this guy was the second most, well, the, the muskox yeah. was very majestic. No, majestic's not the word yeah. I would use. <laughs> yeah, mystic. Like you could. Yeah, mystical, for mystical. sure. Yeah, yeah, like something out of the dark, dark crystal. Dark crystal, like uh -huh. those things. Like, yes. and, uh, I, every sound effect I have is <laughs> just everything Chewbacca. It's either you're Russian <laughs> or you're Chewbacca. Yeah, so it was really, I mean, that was just a. Uh, the that, icing on the cake. Yes, the icing on the ice fields. at our favorite little campground in the area in yeah. Hinton. It's that little RV park where they had Wi-Fi like all throughout the park, which was True. crazy. And uh, we had a very pleasant, well-rested night. The sun is setting to an absolutely glorious day from waterfalls to the massive male elk that we just saw to glittering ponds of blue and green and glaciers wow i am exhausted though <laughs> i cannot wait to just curl up in our tent which we still have to set up then we woke up the next morning and we were going to do the hat trick of our riding through Good morning, everyone. We are packing up. We are going to go back through the Icefields Parkway once more. We've covered going through the Icefields Parkway a few times already, but the first day it was really smoky and overcast and, you know, yeah. gloomy, if you will. Then, uh, then it was on the way back northwest, it was sunny-ish and pretty and you got to see everything in all its glory. Yes. And now this time it was like rainy and gloomy, which is a different type of gloom than, you know, yeah. Smoky smoke. And 
some of the wildfires were still raging. I mean, they had become like these pockets of fires now, but yeah. um, there were still lots of helicopters and firefighters trying yeah. to combat these wildfires. I mean, you look into the landscape and it's like, I don't know if our viewers are, are old enough to remember playing like Sim City, but it's like when certain <laughs> little grids like start on fire and they're isolated all by themselves. There's all of these little fires burning across the mountains here. Take a look. a very cold day compared to yesterday. Overcast and very windy, which is not good for the fires. So they desperately need some rain here. It was interesting to ride back through and yet again another perspective to see on, on nature on a, on a rainy day. We had something really cool to look forward to that evening because we were going to meet up with some friends of ours, yeah. Tina Kay and Bruce. And Bruce. And they live right around Banff, which is just known to be one of the most beautiful parts of Canada. Yeah, we've been in contact with Bruce and Tinica for for a while. Like we, we were riding through Africa and they reached out to us and we had some yeah. good conversations. You know, it's, it's fun the, the people that you meet and you talk to on social media well before you've ever shaken hands and seen them face to face. But you know, fellow travelers, fellow riders, people who are just interested in, in our journey and, and us on the reflection of people who have traveled different parts of the world that we get to you know, bleed them for information for. It's just a really cool experience, and yeah. we're glad we had that opportunity. And Tina Kay and Bruce are a very interesting couple. They, uh, Tina Kay is from, originally from South Africa, but lived for many years in the UK, and Bruce is Canadian New Zealander. Yes, we so, like really smorgasbord, cool. <laughs> friend, you know. It's like Craig and Michelle, when we first met them, it was, then we met them in Guatemala, but they were, no, they were. Or us. Phil and Sepna, they were French, Canadian, Fijian, yeah. so cool. Yeah, very international. We're just boring. We're from Chicago. <laughs> we're from Chicago. We've been a few places, but we're from Chicago. <laughs> we like pizza. We like pizza. And hamburgers. <laughs> Look at you admitting to stuff that's not true. <laughs> She do likes, like but hamburgers. she doesn't partake. I'm the one. Watch all these videos again and make a little check to see how many, <laughs> how many times, times you saw Marissa eat a hamburger versus me. Well, yeah. this night was going to be really cool because uh, they, oh, they were, were going gonna to bribe, which is like South African for grill barbecue. up some meat. Yeah, barbecue, also yeah. known as grill up some meat. <laughs> So on our way to Banff, the skies opened up, the sun came out, and we came across this scene as we entered the Banff area that was just out of this world. Now this had been a new road that we had not been on before and it looked, I know, I think I've said this before, but you know that scene in The Land Before Time where it just like opens up to the oh. Green Valley? Are you talking about that, 
that yeah, the slidey, slidey mountain. Slidey mountain. <laughs> That's its actual name. Slidey, slidey mountain. mountain. <laughs> I think it might be Slidey McMountain. <laughs> yeah, all these cool little, you know, formations in the landscape. And that whole day we've been twisting around with these just insanely turquoise blue waters with yeah. a magical backdrop. And yeah, I mean, it was, I just can't get enough of it. But yeah, that Slidey McMountain was really... <laughs> A prominent thing in the in the landscape. So stunning, absolutely, and all the greens and the blues of the water. Yeah. Oh, what a scene! We had an amazing night with Tina Kay and Bruce. They made their awesome braai and we had great chats about traveling the world yeah. on motorcycles. It's always so much fun. They had a, a jacuzzi. Yes! Oh my that goodness, was nice. that was really nice. Yes. <laughs> That's what we needed yes. after all this riding and camping. And the next day we had planned to go visit our friends in Calgary. Emiliano! Emiliano and Melissa! And Melissa! Who we'd met in Africa. Yes, we met them. So crazy. Yeah. And, and now they lived in, in Calgary. I always say Calgary. Yeah, that's not right. <laughs> We kind of, we, you know, we don't know the area very well, but there was a little short line and we weren't too far away from them that we were just gonna take. And Bruce said, oh, no, 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 man, you gotta take this beautiful road. Yeah, so it was kind of like this loop because if we went directly to Calgary, it would have pretty much just been highway. Yeah. But he said, no, it's a gravel road, it's awesome, there's mountains, you're gonna love it. And he was right. He was correct, Amando. One thing that was not a bummer, but one thing that we were not able to do when we were in all these national parks was to shoot up our drone, which you know we just had and we loved yeah. the footage of, but in national parks in Canada, it's like a $20,000 fine. And as soon as we were told that, we were like, okay, yeah, yeah we're not gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, so now we were officially out of the national parks. And so we were able to shoot the drone up and get some little cool shots. But, so we had been doing this thing where I would control the drone from the back of the motorcycle. Two up, we can kind of do that, right? Kinda. So far, I've been super successful at it. So, so far, <laughs> she's been successful. But then, as we were doing our awesome drone stuff and riding the bike at the same time, yeah. I thought, oh, it'd be really great to get super low and then kind of come in at us while we're riding by. But super low, like down and back, not like forward and... Yeah. Yeah, we, she, <laughs> she got into some, some trees. All of a sudden, I see branches like all around the drone. She's I'm like, like ah! out. And I'm like, what's going on, what's going on? She's like, the drone, the drone. I'm like, how did you... I ran it into a tree. Yeah. But it's the drone, it doesn't have a lot of sensors. This is a good time to plug no our, uh, our Patreon page because we want to upgrade <laughs> to our, a DJI Mini 3. But yeah, we kind of hung out in the tree like a scared cat in the corner. And it was like, I don't know where I'm at or what's going on. It did not crash. It didn't crash. 
No, I got stuck in the trees. It, it, it just kind of hovered in the trees. Thank tree. God it wasn't like really far up. It was like three feet <laughs> off the ground. And then we were able to like manually move it just little by little, but. Scary though, when you're that close to obstacles and there's yeah. nothing preventing you from just running it into the Hence tree. That's why we need sensors. Patreon, click it's below. <laughs> we do want to thank all of our current Patreons. Yes, and, you guys uh, are so awesome. All the support you've given us and thank you to everybody who's been clicking and, and watching our videos. Yes. We're glad to, to be on this side of the camera and we hope to meet you one day face to face. And that's it for this episode. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding ding. So that we'll be seeing you next time. Peace everybody. Bye. Stay safe. And another way you can support us pushing forward is I have written three motor scooter books about us traveling around the world. Uh, the first one is Made in Voyage. It's kind of the who, what, why, where we decided and the inspiration behind it. And then we got two up and overloaded. <laughs> and that's us uh, going from Chicago to Panama. And yes. then I, my personal favorite book is Blood, Sweat, and No Tears, us going from <laughs> Columbia to Ushuaia. So, there's a link below. It'd be awesome if you wrote along with us in detail. Thanks for all the support, guys. Thank you. Peace. Calgary. Calgary. Very what is good. it when you're on a bunch of horses charging? Cavalry. Mm, see, <laughs> yeah, a different word. That sounds the same. That is, this is like a Jeopardy question, I feel. <laughs> <laughs>